amber, waves of gold. Freddie Smith, we're waiting on. Freddie Smith, did our life. Hello, my people, my people. Hi. 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 I'm good. I'm good. We're going to be uh, getting Freddie Smith here in a few minutes. I just, uh, at uh, 8 o'clock, we always open up. 10 minutes before to make people, to uh, get people in. Straighten up, make sure everything's all set, make sure, I can, oh, see, see what happens? Do you see what happens? See, I had to fix things, see what, if, if that happened when I was on with him, <gasps> that would have been awful. I have to make things, crazy old guy, what's up? Hold on, I gotta move over. All right. So we're just, I'm just setting up because he'll be in, in a few minutes. I'm just getting everything all set for him. We're getting everything set, making sure the lighting's okay. Yes, we are. Lighting's good, picture's good. Can everybody hear me? He'll be in in a few minutes. We're just going to talk and laugh and do some funny stuff. I don't know about funny stuff, but we're just going to hang out. I know I had to, uh, I had one. Hi, we had a, um, who's coming in? It's Freddie Smith. Freddie Smith. He has a podcast and a, and a show, I believe, with his wife. And, um, but he was on Days of Our Lives for a very long time. I think from 2001 um, till I want to say 2018 or 19. I can't remember. Sometimes I do. Hey, Dragonfly Mama. Sometimes I do, um, some recon, but sometimes I'm like, ugh, I'll just, pfft. I just think he's adorable and he's funny and he's fun. And hi, Kelly. And I just was like, I did a duet with your outpet. Oh, okay, cool. I'll go look at it. Hi, and I'm just like, hey, I am, I just like, I still have a stupid cough, so hopefully I don't do that in the middle of everything. Oh, thanks, I appreciate you guys. Excuse me, ma'am, how old are you? Why, who cares? A hundred, I'm a hundred. Um, uh, hi, thank you, I appreciate you guys, I appreciate you guys. Oh, I didn't know you were going to do that kind of guest you're not supposed to do that kind of guest. You gotta be my host guest. You gotta go live. Freddie, go live. And then I ask you to come in. Freddie, weirdo. So go live and then I'll ask you to come in. Then you'll be my co host. Like you'll be over here. This is incorrect. Oops. You get what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying, bro? You need to go live, and then I will invite you in. So you'll be side by side with me. Freddy. You get what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying? He has a... Don't you have... You have he's... Yes, of course he does. <clears throat> there he is. There he is. Oh, I gotta turn my thing up. Hi, Poopsie. Hey, look at us in tie-dye. Tie-dye rocks, right? It does rock. Because you get This is awesome. You, I've never done a live like this where... Uh, side by side? Yeah, this is my first time. What? Is this too dark? Should I get a light? Or you don't care? No, you're fine. All right. I think you're fine. You are fine. <laughs> Why, thank you. What's up? So you're in New Hampshire, right? Yes. Yeah, like, that's my son. Sorry, that was weird. Maybe we'll to stand up like Yes, I'm in New Hampshire. In your How Florida. is that? Is that where you you grew up? Yep, I actually grew up a diagonal from where I am right now because I bought the house diagonal from. Um, yeah. Oh, cool! And then yeah, my I've sister been... lives next door. That's great. Yeah, it's pretty funny. That's awesome. yeah. No, it's good to be close to family. I, I was away from family for so long, and now I'm getting closer again, and it just makes life so much more full. Yeah, well, you know, I've been around them so much. 
that that it's the opposite. Sometimes you're like, ah, oh, man, you know, it's fine, it's fine. I'm I'm very grateful, but sometimes you're like, you can, you know, like I'll be just in my house and I can hear my name from my sister next door, and I'm like, I open the door, I'm like, did you say my name? They're like, yeah. I'm like, oh. It's weird. It is weird. It's weird. But you know, my dad, my mom's gone, but my dad's still there. And it's just funny seeing him putting around. And all of a sudden, like, I'll, I'll open the door and he'll just be in my yard. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's nice though, to have family around. What did, what do they think of your, um, of you being on TikTok and making all these awesome videos? Oh, I don't know. They could take it or leave it. What do you think, Brady? Oh, he's just like, <laughs> Don't embarrass me, mom. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, they could, they think it's fine. I, I definitely have been a little bit overboard with it. I'm going to because that's what happens. Yeah, you get hooked. Yeah, I know. Have you gotten that way or are you, you're not that hooked? I, I kind of am. I go through waves. You know, I started playing with TikTok like early on just didn't really know what it was or what to do. Cause I was so used to like Instagram and right. But after like a year and a half of starting and stopping, I kind of feel like I at least found my voice. Like, did you feel that like at the beginning of like finding like your voice on the app or is, or, yeah. or is that too much? Yeah, no, like I <laughs> definitely got on here and I was like, you just don't know what to do. Cause you don't know what people like, you know, and you're like, I don't know what to do. And then, of course, like the one video you put on that you don't take any time to do and it's just something stupid is the thing that makes it. But then you kind of get stuck in that, too, you know? Yes. Yeah. So, that was so that, that. Yeah. that's why that's why I try just to like whatever I find to be amusing throughout the day. I'm just like, if I can make a cool video about this, it just makes it easy just to. Put it because if you try to do like a skit every day, I feel like it consumes your life. But if I just do like vlog style, mm -hmm. it helps me connect but have some fun without the stress of it being like a full time gig, you know? Right, right. And I that's the thing too is like I didn't want to get into like a specific thing, like I, I don't even know what I do. I feel like sometimes I do like a little skit thing, or sometimes I'm just like do a reaction video, or sometimes I talk about some friggin' product I like, but it's not like a paid ad. It's just like, I like this thing. Or sometimes I'm just so irritated with something. I'm like, what is this? You know, like you've seen it. I'm just all yeah. over the place. So I don't really specifically have something. Yeah. I, I remember, I remember I started following you after it's probably a year ago. I don't remember the exact what? video, but I think you, I think you did a duet and you like grabbed your purse and you were leaving the house oh. in a hurry. Which one? And I don't was remember I the what fucks the with Vicky. Yes, that's the one. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I'm going that's to get the fucks. The... Yeah, that w I like, died laughing. I was like, this is so funny. And I think that maybe that's the first time I saw you. Yeah, I don't. Maybe I followed you on another video, but I remember like being like, Holly's so funny. I want to follow her journey. Jesus. And I feel like it was a while ago. That was a long. That was like, holy monkey, when was that? That was friggin' forever ago. And I I love that because that was just something that, in most of the videos that I do is, that's the first thing I think of and I do it. Like, I don't have a yeah. million things in my draft. Like, when I see a video, I do it. And then that's the, that's the one I use. You know? Yeah. Like, I don't go on and on and like, does this look okay? I don't know. Let me check and do it again. The more you think about it, just forget the first reaction is usually the funny one. So, but that thing blew up like crazy. And then, but then I didn't want to be stuck with the whole Vicky. Like everyone's like, you're going to do more stuff with Vicky, more stuff with Vicky. I'm like, okay, she's funny and stuff, but I don't want to be, because it's borderline making fun of somebody, which it gets a little bit gray, you know, the gray area. You know yeah. I mean? So that's, yeah. that's what's a little bit scary about that part. So to be like funny, to like poke fun, but not really make fun of. So, but that was, that was funny. And I, I mean, that still goes, I, I'll have people still be like, did you ever get the Fs with Vicky? You know, like, can you get the Fs yeah. with me? That whole thing was like, I'm going to get the Fs with you. And then all these other people were getting their purses and getting the Fs. It was very fun. So I do like that kind of thing when that kind of stuff blows up. So that was pretty fun. <laughs> 
It's fun. What did you do? Did you do any sort of content before TikTok or is this your first like adventure with content creation? What's your history with it? I was just a weird, funny person that just like, <laughs> I was always just like the, you know, the life of the party and oh, you got to invite her because she'll make everybody laugh. I was always like the class clown and stuff like that, but I never ha had that kind of, that kind of thing. I never had any kind of thing like this. That's why I was like, I guess, I don't know, this is for like kids. I feel kind of weird, but I'm like, you know, like this yeah. is fun, man. If we had this stuff back in the day, I would have probably cleaned up. Well, oh my God, yeah, I keep that. Well, there's parts of me that that's happy that it wasn't here, but I wonder if my behavior would have changed. Cause I think about myself from like 18 to 25, yeah. none of that was documented. And I feel like it was a shit show. Yeah, and I'm well, kind of happy that you know, my mom, actually, they she had got a Magnavox like giant camcorder, you know, the kind you had to carry up on your shoulder. So I definitely have a ton of videos from me and my friends that, you know, like they were skating or they were playing hockey or something. So or we used to hang out in my basement that was like a family room. So my mom was always like, you can just hang. They, she rather had everybody come over so she knew where we were. And it was really just me and like six guys and maybe another girlfriend. But I always hung out with guys. That was just always my thing. I'd rather hang out with a bunch of guys any day of the week because bitches be crazy. Because like, you know, so I just rather hang out with guys. This is funner. So I have so yeah. much funny videos that we did and they're all on VHS. And I'm like, holy shit. Because we're like, we did shit that is so funny. I, I just, I have to get them like transferred to like something because they're going to get ruined eventually. But, oh my God. Yeah. They're so funny. They're so funny. But I'm so glad we well, at least had some of that. Yeah. Oh my God. They're so funny. And it was authentic because you never thought when you were making them that it could potentially be seen by a thousand people, let alone a no. million or something. I you know. were making it just for yourself. Yeah. And it so was. So it's a different kind of authenticity. And the funny part is. Even after we filmed them, I we maybe watched some of them a couple of times, but never watched them ever again. That was funny. You know, like they're still like in the box and they're in this other box and they've been there the whole time. I just remember how exactly what, what's in. I just know what we filmed. It's just really, yeah. really fun. But if oh, I just miss those days, man. It was, was it was interesting, days. but. Yeah, but I, I like what's happening. I know the world's yeah. crazy right now, yeah. and there's a lot of you know stuff happening. But there's also a ton of good stuff. Like yeah. I never like to over like overlook how many amazing things there are in the world right now, and opportunity, and able to connect with people. And yeah, yeah. So I, I like what's going on. I like that we can connect in social media if you treat it well in right. moderation. It can be such a great tool. Well, and I like we that. can be goofy and creative. And I like that, like. Somebody like me who is just, you know, 50, I have my own businesses. I live in New Hampshire and I can talk to you who you live where in Florida, right? Or something. And, yeah, I live in Florida now. So yeah. it's, and like, you're like a TV star person and it's like, we're just talking because you're a regular dude and you go shopping and you buy toilet paper. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, it's cool. It's like really fun. It's fun. And I've made yeah, so many friends. It's crazy. It's really crazy. And, and I see that you go live a lot too. What, what do you, do you do like all interviews or do you just kind of, what, what are some other your lives? Sometimes I stop in and watch, but I feel like once you get to know somebody or you're a friend, it, then it almost feels like stalking. No, like I'll I see want my you friends go in. live. We just talk like huh? about whatever. We just talk about whatever. Oh, yeah. I go on in the morning because I guess people get ready for work or they're just like waking up and they just want to hear me ramble. <laughs> while they're getting ready yeah. i guess so i don't know i just talk and then somebody says something and we just just ramble and talk and whatever and i just put some music in the background but i what i didn't go live every day like i feel like i've been going live every day around the same time because people will be like oh i missed you yesterday i'm like oh maybe i should because they there are people that want to go so i usually have like between 50 and 75 people i think that come on at the same time every day. So I'm like, oh, maybe I should do that. And today I went on later in the evening because I was doing something sitting down. I'm like, I guess I'll just put this on while I'm doing it because I was kind of bored. 
And I had like a hundred people in there in the late afternoon. And I, that was kind of cool. And we were just talking about like, mm. I just have this chronic cough. So everyone's trying to figure out like why I have this chronic cough. So it, that we just talked about that for an hour. It's just really funny. It was just, it's just, we just talk about whatever. And then I talk about yeah. like anything that I'm trying to do. I have, you know, there's so many of my followers help support my, you know, the homeless community that I have here in our town. And they're so good about doing that or any kind of help that, that I need for, for any of that, the donation stuff. And, or if anyone has ideas for something, I love it. It's awesome. Yeah. It's a really good way to connect. That's why, cause I, I initially got on, um, you know, Twitter back in maybe 2010, 2011, but when I was working on on the, on Days of Our Lives, that was the TV show that I was on for a while. Oh, and really? I kind was of was it? Doing it? I didn't know. It was just like a little something that I did, you know, as a little side hustle. No, but um, I got on because they said it was like a good idea. But I didn't understand what true connection with an audience and what social media was in 2011. It was still early, but I feel like around 2016, I started to really understand, like, oh, wait a minute you can build deep relationships with people and you can go on a journey for a lifetime because if the show ever ended or I go do something else, mm -hmm. if I didn't have social media, I would just disappear. Yeah. So I love that it can keep you connected with people. It's crazy. It's really neat. It is crazy. So yeah. you, you were on Days Forever. Well, how long were you on it? How many years? I was on for um, about nine years. Nine years. So um, I used to watch 2011 it. to 2020. I, I watched it, I mean, literally, like, religiously. I mean, obviously, I always watched it when I was homesick. When I was in grade school, obviously, it was that 1 to 2 o'clock. That's when it was always on. And I, you know, watched it with my mom. And then, obviously, through high school, I watched it. And I just constantly watched it. I knew who everybody was all the time. And even when I started having kids and then my friends were having kids, there was one friend of mine that, Literally from one o'clock to two, we would be on because our kids would be nap time then, but we'd be on the phone whispering and watching at the same time. <laughs> oh my God. You know, like, yeah. And I mean, my son that just went by, his name's Brady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. There's a, yeah, it's a, well, Brady, our, Eric still, there's a lot of people that you would notice that they're, they're still have strong storylines and yep. that's, what's kind of cool. You can disappear for a couple of years, pop back in, you'll still see familiar faces. I know. And I love that. I just love that. Like, who was your favorite person to work with? I mean, I'm sure that's probably a hard question because they're probably all really awesome. They are awesome. I, I worked with, um, I worked with pretty much everybody, but I spent most of my time working with um, Judy Evans and Wally Kurth, who played my parents, which was Adrian and Justin Kiriakis on the show. And then my uncle, Victor Kiriakis. I worked with him a lot. And then my love interest, uh, Will, for most of the time I work. So all the, when you're like studying lines and you're with them every day, you can become closer. Where if you work with someone once every two months, you're still close, yeah. but not as deep as like someone you work with. But um, but yeah, everyone was super chill. There was nice. like no ego. It was like just nice. really just awesome. Every Easy peasy. And we got to work. Yeah. Everybody on this side keeps saying, please go back to days. Yeah. Is I that have, not I, even I, an I, option? Uh, it's well, it was an option for a little while, but then I kind of had to make the decision about six months ago, whether I was going to, you know, completely close that chapter or if I was going to keep going back and forth and I made the decision that it was kind of a great nine year run. We did a lot of good, but I wanted to start a new chapter in my life. And so we moved to Florida and me and my wife got married and, you know, kids are next and oh, the family's so moving here. So, so we're doing some new stuff. We're, we're making content, we're in real estate. And yep. so I can still do acting like through these apps and yep. who knows in the future, but um, but yeah, I like to look at it as like nostalgic now. Like it was a great time, a lot of great memories, but I know people are disappointed when I don't want, when I'm not going to go back, but you know, we can look back on all the good times that we had together. Yeah, but like you, you're, that's what you wanted to do. And that's really cool that you were like, okay, that's what I want to do. And that's enough for now, but you want to move forward and do all your other stuff. Because if you got stuck in that dude, you could be like, you could be in there for fucking like 40 years, you know? Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, that's the, that's and it's a, a it's a cool gig, yeah, but it's but... also, you know, for me, I, I always make a joke that I have like this, like I get bored easily. Not that I was bored working there. It was always different and challenging, yep. but I just like tasting new things. I'm like, where can I go and like do something new and just have that adventure and so even now, it's like we've been doing a podcast for three years. Yeah, We're starting cool. real estate, but we might pivot in five years and go do something else. Like, who knows? You know, or it'll lead me back to acting. I don't know. But I like just moving around a lot and trying new things. Yeah. Do you, got, do you have happy. ADD or ADHD or anything? Not really. I just I just get bored easily. So I'm, I don't know if that counts, but uh, I can I know, focus on what I'm doing. Yeah, that's my issue. Like, I got to have my hand in everything because like... When something kind of gets boring, I'm like, all right, what's this next thing? That's why it's like, one day I'm doing this, and then I get that, and that thing, and then that's not finished over there, but this is fun. And then somebody has to send me some other video of somebody making something on TikTok, and I'm like, wait, I got to go buy that now. You know, it's like. I'm what's, what's your bit? What's your business? What do you do uh, full time? Well, we have a printing company, so we do, uh, I have an Etsy store. I've had that for about 12 years. And my niche is wedding. So everything I do is wedding related. So it's it's graphic designs that I do. They get put on wedding welcome bags. So, you know, if like if you're having guests come out of town or whatever, you put all the crap in the bag. Yeah. So I do all the like the designing for the bags and or like the okay. bachelorette stuff. So, I mean, I didn't know. I didn't know it was going to be as big as it is. Like it's a really... Like I got to buy a house within like four years. I was like, oh, when people would tell people like, oh, I have an Etsy store. And they're like, oh, that's so cute. What do you do? And I'm like, no, I got like garment printers. I have like, I have to have insurance and shit for this stuff. And like I, there's like a business back here. So, but we did have a store um, on my main street, but because of um, COVID, we only had it open for six months. It was like my dream to have the store. And I want it to be a really cool store that, like younger kids could come to and have just buy weird shit, you know, like just yeah. knickknacks and shit. But COVID shut me down, obviously. It was just fucking horrible. But one of the things I wanted to do is you could come in and be like, me and my friend have this joke and I really want you to make a shirt. And I would come up with a design on the spot and make the shirt, hand it to them and they could be out the door and it's 20 bucks. Bye. That was like my whole thing. And it worked and it was great. And then, and then COVID came. So it was yeah. fine. But I still have that business and that was just extra, but this business is fine. Weddings was no more really. There was very, very few. I was going from selling one or 200, 300 bags to like 20 or 15. So now it's, I feel like it's getting there. Yeah. We were like 80% down in sales, 80%. That was like crazy. So it's creeping back up. It's fine. But I have TikTok to fill in my time. So that's fine. And then there's things yeah. coming of that I didn't realize that was going to happen. You know, there's like people are sending me things like, can you please do this thing and I'll send you this thing. Could you do it? But I don't like to really do that. I like to find a product on my own if I like and out of, you know, like if I like this egg maker thing, I don't want somebody to send me it and tell me to do something. Like if I find out I liked it, that's when I do a, like a review on it. Yeah. But I don't want somebody to send it to me and be like, can you do a review on this? And this? You know, I don't want to do that. But if I like it, that's when I'm doing it. But I mean, I have yeah. like a brand uh, thing I'm doing with Lumi. Um, Lumi, you know, Lumi. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm doing a brand thing with them and um, doing some like commercially things with them. And I'm going to do some lives with the owner of the company here on TikTok. So I'm excited about doing that. That's that's our already signed contract. Everything's cool with that. So that's coming. And then we have a cruise that we're doing that me and I don't know, you saw that obviously, if you look at my page, the cruise with Imagine Biscuit and Heather Shaw, um, Shoe Lover, which is the tater tot lady. And that, so we're, yeah. we're planning that cruise for next year. So it just, there's a lot of other stuff coming. It's just like a lot. And you're like, Ugh, what do I do? And then I was, was asked to be on the unfiltered tour which is like that comedy tour that's out, but I just have too many things. I can't do it. I can't do it. Yeah. But it's all exciting. Isn't that exciting stuff? Yes. I love to be in part of it. I love it. You know, and then I have like all the stuff that I do for the homeless community here. And that takes up a lot of time. That's all volunteer anyways, you know? Yeah. Do you do any, 
any volunteer or any charities? What are you involved with? Anything? Yeah, I, I haven't found anything here in Florida yet, but I do want to get involved in something locally because um, we started off here about a year ago and we're still kind of locked down. Now we're right. finally meeting some people, which is really great. And then getting used, you know, getting acclimated to the community. But yeah, you definitely want to do something in the community and and be able to help out. It's a because it's that's the best feeling you can get, especially yeah. if you have a platform to be able to share and get people involved. So that's the best part is like you get, you know, it doesn't matter if you have a million followers, even if you just have your handful, like 50 people that are like your people, like your tribe or your like collection of awesomeness. <laughs> Yeah, that's all you need, you know, so. to do some good. Yeah, to do some good. And I always see those videos are so heartwarming where people go out and help and they make videos about it. But then there's certain times that it's like heartwarming, but then other times it feels a little too staged. Oh, no, I hate it. A little it. too I don't invasive. Like, it's like, like, here's your water. You know, like, here's a hundred dollars. Yeah. Take the, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't do it. Or they give you money and then they stalk you because they want to see how you spend it. I'm not doing that. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting, but I, I like how you're thinking about this. That's how I think about my brand, even when it comes to certain products to promote or things yeah. that you do, where it's like you never want to take the the quick buck. You know, I always try to think about my brand 10 years from now. And just if you're always authentic, people are going to come on the journey with you because they know they can trust what you're doing. They go yep. through the ups and downs with you. And so it's that's oh, and everybody you know, on my side knows that I'm like. 100% honest. I don't even have to tell anybody because I am who I am. And I've met a lot of people through here and I am who I am. Because guess what? Oh, you can I tell. Don't yeah. I have fucking time to be nobody else because my brain will not allow me to be anyone else. So I can't do it. And I've met some so cool friggin' people on here. I'm just so grateful for, her. but it sucks because everyone lives so far away. That's the worst. Yeah, that's from everywhere. And you know, that's the but part. that's why we got to be able to travel. I, I'm still waiting. I know it's like a lot safer yeah. to travel now, but I haven't been haven't on done a plane any traveling. I yeah, I've been on one twice. No, so I have fine. Never. Oh, never. I've never flown. Oh, I thought you meant since COVID. It's never in my lifetime. Where's going to be your first destination? I don't know. Now it's a whole thing. Like, where should I go first? You know, like. Now I now I have so many options. I have I have friends in like every state in Canada. You know, like where do I go? I mean, I could drive to Canada, but where do I go? Yeah. What's been the What's been their hesitation? Are you a little scared? Or oh, I just, haven't had to go never... anywhere. I haven't had to go anywhere. But now I'm like I have places to go now. I have Arizona. I have Colorado. I have California. I have Wyoming. I have Michigan. I have Illinois. I even know these where these states even were before now i know where they are <laughs> now i have florida you know what i mean like i have everywhere everywhere to go and and that's what's fun like for me because i've done a bunch of different events throughout the united states and what i've learned from it is if you're gonna go and do like even like a meet and greet like if you were to take a little tour just like meet up in a hotel lobby hit people up and say hey i'm gonna be in phoenix arizona this day at this hotel come hang out and people just come and meet you and you can like chit chat with people and do like fun meet and greets. That's what so I that's the do. best. You see similar that's names every day. That's what I want to do. And that was like one of the things I was, I was just talking, you know, Heather Shaw, she's the one that looks like Jim Carrey, the comedian. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I just was talking to her a couple hours ago and she's like, I really feel like we should do a meet and greet. Let's like figure something out. She's in doubt in Texas. So I was like, we need to figure out where we could do these things. And I don't know like the logistics of it. So do you just say, hey, we're going to be in blah, blah, blah hotel? Like, I don't even know what, what we would do. It's weird. It it depends on, you know, it depends on how you want to set it up. Because the ones that I've done is essentially people will rent out a community room in like a hotel. And that's where you can kind of start, where everyone can kind of meet and hang out. But Or you can go and do like an activity. Like oh. go on, like a cruise is a little kind of expensive. It's too it sounds, much. It's too much. But but maybe like bowling or a restaurant or an amusement park or something where you can hang out. But it depends on the amount of people that come. How do you know? If you have, well, you could potentially sell tickets, but make it cheap if you don't care about making a profit. Or if you want to make some money, you can. But this is, way you can gauge how yeah. many people are coming. 
listen, I'm not like Nicole Kidman. You know, you don't need to pay a million dollars to come see. I and if and if it was any sort of payment, I would definitely want it to go to to charity or something. Because like as of right now, I just want to meet people that have. People don't realize too that. You know, I get a lot of messages that say, oh, you've helped me through this day and I appreciate you make me laugh and blah. Do people even understand how much they've helped me with this? Because I have not had an outlet for, for me to have as big of a personality as I do and not to be able to be around people for that long. I was going crazy. So for me yeah. to have these people saved me as much as if they say that I saved them, I'm telling you, like it, I could have probably went in a very big depression if this wasn't, I don't even know what I would do if I didn't have this, honestly. It sounds yeah, weird. It's like, an outlet. I mean, I got a full life. I got a lot of, I got, I got kids, I got family and stuff, but man, like that was horrible for everybody. It still is. Yeah. It, it, it hit me like a year in. I think I, I felt I was doing all right for like a year. And then it started really hitting me when I realized I haven't hugged another human. Because when we were in Los Angeles too, like my family was in Ohio, my wife's were in New Jersey. So we had our friends in LA, but everyone was quarantined, mm. but it's not even like we saw our family. It went, we went like an entire year. Oh my God. So it, it was like, it was really tough. And, but being able to, yeah, to hop on and go live and talk and hang yeah. out with people and have FaceTime and all that. But yeah, that's why I want to meet people too. I, I want to go around and do events and, and meet people. And, um, but you'll love it if you, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a lot of love. It's something that once you do it, you'll get it. It's addicting because everybody, some of your fans probably even know you just as well, or even certain parts of you more than like your family. Like I feel oh, like some I of my fans who've been on my true. journey they've watched like everything we've done where my parents will see like one thing a week or my cousin will see one thing a month where like the, like my true fans have, they watch everything I do. So they know everything. And when you finally meet them and you're like, Oh my God. And yep. you're chatting. It's, yep. it's great. If you can do an event, I would recommend it. Cause it's, oh, it's a, it's that. a love. Yeah. Thing. I feel like that's the way it's going, but you know, I have friends now that are like, well, if I need to see what you're doing, I just go to TikTok now. I don't even like, call you anymore just go and see what you're doing or like if i if my friend said i tried to call you yesterday and i went oh i know i was live she goes i know the minute i hung up i literally went to tiktok and you were live so i knew that that's why you hung up on me <laughs> like, yeah but yeah i feel kind of bad it really is like it, it really does take over it's a little bit i mean it's weird a little bit but how do you i mean I, i'm trying because like my problem is it because I do have ADHD. It is true. You do follow the dopamine. So this is like exciting for me. So other things get put off, you know, like put in the back. Yeah. And I hate that. And I'm trying to not do that. I, I mean, I belong to a couple of like ADHD discord things and this, you know, like trying to like figure it out. Cause it's hard. It's hard. Yeah, are you, me. are you, are you on, are you on the, are you on TikTok like a lot throughout the day or just like, do you go live in the morning and then at night I go or do you on find live, yourself just. Yeah, I go on live in the morning and then I, I put out a video and then I have to work obviously, but then like in me, like, I feel like I can do two things at once, but I probably can't, but I'll like do a couple of things and then I'll just like look at it. But I think a lot of it is habit now because it's just a habit. So these are the things I have to like break the habits for. So I have this thing where I might put my phone in the other room on purpose because then it won't be in front of me. Yeah. Listen, man, I'm trying. You know what I mean? Like when we go up to the bedroom and I want to watch like some TV, I'll turn the ringer part off and then I'll put it. And then I know now like I bought a fidget toy. So now that's my thing instead of picking the phone up and playing with it, or I have my iPad and I can draw, you know what I mean? Like these things now yeah. instead of that. So you, I just need to, I mean, I know that these things are happening, so that's, I'm trying, but it's not, it doesn't happen overnight. No, you got to take, take a little time and yeah, get used to it. That's it what I feel like. There's so many movies know. these days that I'm like, you would have had my attention three years ago, but yeah. when my, my phone's an inch away from me and you're doing exposition in the movie where I know what's going to happen, kind of, 
I like find myself watching TikToks, and then when the movie gets exciting again, I go back that, to that's it. That's what happens. That's what happens. Yeah. Like I just put a video on the other day. I was like, I really do miss and miss like going into the bathroom and reading shampoo bottles because we didn't have. That's all we did. We're like always trying to find something to read, but now yeah. you literally, you know what I mean? We're spoiled now. Yeah. Is what it is. We're spoiled. Oh yeah. It's I don't constant. know what's in my shampoo anymore. <laughs> So true. Christ. But so you have a yeah. podcast, right? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, me and my wife uh, started it um, in 2018. So we, we've done it for a little over uh, about three and a half years now. And it's been a it's been a fun journey because I, I like to be able to talk. That was kind of my platform, you know, because like tweeting really wasn't it. Instagram at first when it was just photos kind of wasn't as much you know but as soon as i could talk and share ideas and document my life i was like podcasting is my thing and i didn't yeah. know it was until we started doing it and uh but yeah so we, we've had a lot of fun we talk about like lifestyle it's almost like a, a video diary of our lives so i feel like in 10 years we can look back That's so and be cute. like what was going on or show our kids like here was mom and dad when they were the day after they were married here were their thoughts for an hour oh my god you know like so it's kind of cool to have. And, and then we talk about pop culture and, you know, things going on in the news. We don't get political, yeah. but we do talk about like pop culture stuff on a more like light, lighter end. Right. Yeah. Cause I'm, I'm, fun. I want to start one and I, and I said, I was going to start one. And obviously like to start one is there's an area in my work room where I'm like, okay, this area is going to be where I'm going to do it. But that area is not finished yet. Cause I keep doing a hundred other things. So like that mm -hmm. is the thing. It's like I want to bring other TikToker people on and just talk to them about whatever, like the top tens of stupid shit or why yeah. something is or something. I just want it to be dumb, just stupid crap. But I just need to do one thing. It's just I have too many things going on, man. But I can't wait because I just can't wait to talk to people. I love talking to people. Yeah, it's it's a lot of I fun. You got to use this background too. Are they you cool? A, that's a cool background. Yeah. Amazon. I'm in they my hook kitchen, it up. Guy. I'm in my kitchen. I mean, my kitchen's cool it. too, but my kitchen literally, one wall is orange, one's yellow, one's like darker red, one's aqua, and one's green. I'm crazy. Fits your personality perfect. Exactly. Like, I just, I'm all about colors, man. My friend was mad, yeah. though. My friend was mad because we had picked this like blue or whatever. And the minute I painted it all, she went and she came and she's like, why? So why'd you do this? <laughs> I was like, because this is me, man. I walk in and you're like, boom. I don't know. I'm just more. Yeah. And I can no, see I you it. have nice white, <laughs> white background. Yeah, we just moved into our uh, pod or our uh, apartment here, so we didn't do any painting or anything. So we we usually move like so often, and we were getting like dinged every year when it came to uh, yeah. security deposits. So we would paint, and then we'd you know lose our security deposits. So we're like, let's keep it basic and just you know use it as a little spot until we buy a home. But we want to make right. sure that Orlando's where we're staying before right. we purchase. Right, right. But I think we are. Orlando's really cool. I swear. The background you have was exactly Jason Ritter's background. That's why I'm like, dude, are you like with him right now? Because his was exactly your background. I think maybe there wasn't a door or something, but I'm telling you, it's like the exact background. That's maybe it's just the cookie cutter, like 2020 buildings these days. So friggin' funny. So friggin' funny. So what, what made you How wear you tie dye? Uh, I, I just saw it uh, at, I, I bought it at Marshall's like two weeks ago and I go in like every few, cause I do a lot of content. So I don't want to wear the same shirt, right. so I'll, but I don't want to spend like a lot of money. So I'll go to Marshall's and get for a hundred bucks, like all these t-shirts and shirts. And when I saw this one, I was like, I got to rock a tie dye and I've been wearing it like all the time now until I get sick of it. And then it'll just go in the pile. I know everybody thinks I wear the same shirt. Do you understand how many of these choose kindness friggin' shirt? I have like, 50 tie-dye shirts. That's all I love wearing. I love them. That's all I wear. Did you wear it even before it kind of came back in style? Were you just tie-dye all the time? Or No. I, I mean, I love t-shirts. And that was like part of my 
my thing when I first got my business, I wanted it to be t-shirts. I just wanted it to be like t-shirts. I want, I wanted to make really cool graphics for t-shirts. That's what I wanted to do. And then it just ended up being wedding stuff, which was weird. But, um, I don't know. I just like colors and colors. Yeah. And colories. But I didn't make this. People think I make them. I don't fucking time to make freaking tie dyes. <laughs> Like, I got time to do that. I'm going to start tie-dyeing. I mean, I have all the stuff for it, of course, but I can't do it. Yeah. But I can't do it. But, no, I, um, but it's it's hard. I mean, I try, I make my own merch stuff, but if you ever need any, like, weird thing, I'll make it for you and ship it right to you. Just okay. one. Like, you don't need a hundred of them. If you just need one thing. Yeah. No, I love that. No, that'd be, that'd be nice. How, how do you, um, how do you feel like you meet people on tiktok is it kind of the way that we've met where you just kind of like you you connect with another creator and you guys like each other and then you yep. connect and build a relationship yep that's all i'm like hey what's going on you're kind of funny or like what what's up yeah like, you just end up like or you see that they are friends with the same people somehow and or like you you know what i mean it's just like or they're always in your live or they come up on your for you page all the time you're like i think you like this guy or woman or whatever yeah you know and you're like well let's let's see what they're doing and then you end up seeing like they're funny or you just connect somehow and then i reach out and if sometimes you can't get a hold of people which irritates me because sometimes this the platform here on tiktok is not easy to get to people um so that's a bummer because like when it says like you get a new friend or whatever it it just shoves everything you know what i mean you have to pin people yeah or whatever. So I always tell people like try to go on Instagram and message me because I can get it. Hi, Nate Simon. Um, so that's that's the thing. It's like I try to get people to go over there to, to message me. But I mean, I I'm not I want to meet anybody who wants to hang out and talk or whatever. Yeah, no, that's a good way. That's because that's what I'm I, that's what I want to do as well. Like meeting just meeting fun people. And that's why I love that, you know, we get to connect and just and you know just because even like in the future you never know when there's something we could do together you know collaborate yeah. and do something and like even with these like tours in the future or something maybe get a bunch of tiktokers together and do it as a group so that it's that's, fun and that's what i'm saying like if we did a florida friggin one like where are you like i don't know can you tell me like where you are in florida not like your street but like <laughs> or like orlando about like about 10 minutes south of disney world Oh, okay. So, like, say we were going to plan, like, a Florida meetup. Because, like, people, I mean, I just feel like we would do so well with a really cool meetup. I just feel like we could have a really cool meetup. Yeah. Like, and the more East people, Coast meetup. Yeah, and if we had a bunch of creators, like, if you did, like, say, even three or five or six or however many, then it's like you you have, you know, six different groups and six different uh, fan bases that can all come together and if the creators like each other yeah then you know the people who are going to yep. come are going to meet and like each other and you know so things like that are really interesting like i'm i've been been wanting to do a tour for a while because uh, it's been two years since i've done an event and there's just something special about like every year but i just wanted to be safe you know i still yeah i know like That's go out and thing. live my life now but to put a hundred people in a room well, just, you know, we just came back from Virginia because we did the wood talk um, thing in Virginia. It was to help uh, Richland's dairy farm, but it was all outside, which was fantastic. That's great. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we were outside and everybody was like, there wasn't a lot of masks and, but everybody was really conscious about how close they were or, you know, we're, we all wanted to hug each other and everything, but still people were still like cool about it. But there is a Nashville meetup that is in a couple of weeks. And I know there's a ton of people, but it's inside. And I'm like, yeah, I can't go, man. I want to go, but I can't go. I can't do it. My friend lives in Nashville and she's like, man, the numbers are mental here. Don't come. Don't come. I want to see you, but please don't come. It's very bad. And, and she yeah. goes, more than half the people do not wear masks here. Just, I don't want you to get ill. I know you got vaccinated, but don't, don't come. So I'm, I'm just not going to go. And then, you know, I want to do the unfiltered tour, but that also is, I just, I feel like I don't have time for one and two. I'm still nervous about going places. I mean, even though I got, I'm just nervous. Yeah. Well, and I, and I think we're just kind of getting used to it because that's how, 
you know, I, I do feel a little better because I feel, unfortunately, this is going to be the new normal for a while. So if it was going to be done in six months, it's kind of like, well, let's just wait it out. But it, it seems like this is going to be around for maybe ever. And then we can't live our lives and not go do things ever. So I also I understand know. that. I know. So, but there'll be a time, yep. right? Like, we'll, yep. there'll be a time that we can get out there and do something. How bad is it in Florida? Still pretty bad there? Or is it... Yeah, I was reading a comment. Um, someone says, I'm a nurse in Florida and the numbers are bad here too. I work on a, on a COVID floor. Um, yeah, Florida, I mean, I, I feel like it's like 50-50 with people wearing masks, but I feel like yeah. Florida's just kind of been like whatever you want to do. Like they don't really have any restrictions here. It's kind of like a free for all, right. which I think is also kind of great that people can make their own decision. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. So I just, yeah, I just do my thing. I hang out with people like sparingly but i go to the grocery store i go i live my life i yes. don't stop living yes. it but Same. but i also don't put myself inside of a house with like 60 people Correct. where we're breathing on each other or go to a bar and yell in each other's face you know i kind of stay away from that still at the moment because right. even though i don't feel i would get sick that badly i don't want even a cold i don't want to get sick right now everyone's all like especially with covid you don't want to be well messing that's the with problem it, so. then you're like do i just have a cold or do i have that like, and then you don't want to go and give it to somebody else who might be vulnerable. And it's like a whole thing. It's a whole thing. This is man. strange. How did this happen? I hate all what of it. What a this. weird time. I hate all of it. Like, I hate all of it. You think back, like, what would my, you know, if I didn't have to close my store, what would have happened? Would it have still been like good? What would have, you know? I know. Who knows? But we're rolling with it, you know? You got to do what you got to do, right? But if we have a tour in, I mean, if we think about doing that, I mean, if you're interested in do, hanging out with us, because we're, I mean, you know, Imagine Biscuit. I don't know. All right. Who's that? Madge and Biscuit. Madge and Biscuit. Yeah. Look up Madge and Biscuit. They're <laughs> friggin' hilarious. Matt, I'm going to write that down so I yes. don't forget. M A D G E A N D, and then biscuit is spelt with a K. Madge and biscuit. They are hilarious to say the least. And then obviously, you know, Heather Shaw. So I don't know. I just feel like we should get a bunch of people together, maybe go somewhere that is less COVID y. Yeah. And if or we just even, find something, because, yeah. Right. Well, no, because I was going to say it's a, it, it's like doing an activity. Yeah. Um, makes it better for everyone, but nothing, not not something is like cause it depends on yet again how many people would come, because at the end of the day you want to be able to spend time with people. But if you were to do something like, you know, I don't know, we just have to find a fun activity maybe outside, and if everyone could just get together for a few hours, That's grab it. some lunch, hang out, talk shoot the shit that's all that's all we want to do that's like in the, just it, to start there and see how it goes you know because if you know because I, I and then i think you'd have to sell tickets mm. um just to create organizations so that we would know and we have to know how many people you know. that yeah. would be the thing i mean can you imagine because you don't know like will three people come well, 300, and that's a whole different experience between that kind of number. That would be crazy. I mean, I would be like, yeah, we're going to be at, like, the, the best Western, and all of a sudden, like... It's like, whoa! Yeah. That'd be cool. So we, yeah, that, cause that's kind of, I think, how we've done it before, is that you sell tickets, and then um, once you get, like, the information, then you email out the location. So you say, like, we're going to do Orlando, Florida... So people know, oh, okay, I'm going to go to Orlando. And then you, once they buy the ticket, then you send over the address well, kind of thing. Is there like, um, is, I mean, obviously Orlando, Florida has a bunch of outside places because it's Florida. Yeah. That wouldn't be a too bad of a place, right? Because you could be do it. Because like now it's starting to get colder up this way. So, I mean. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Hmm. People yeah. on my side well, are like, wait a minute. Everyone's like, wait, there's an event. Wait, where? Let's go. Where? Hold we're horses, brainstorming. Man. We're just brainstorming. We're just at the brainstorming, moment. Yeah. man. Um, we were talking also today about doing like a live like Zoom event that people could come and hang out, do like a live Zoom, and it'd be like ten bucks a ticket or something, and the money could go to whatever, and just like yeah. have us all be there, and then everyone could just talk, ask questions, and hang out, make each other laugh, whatever. That would be fun. 
Yeah. And I, that's it. Yeah, that's. Do you have to do something that's special a much easier, for that? Do you what? Do you have to do something special for that? Because if you say you had like 30 people, like how would that work? I don't even know how you do. You have to. I don't even know. Well, it's it, it depends yet again on how many people, because I've done a few Zooms before where there's, you know, there's someone running the the online event. Oh, OK. So then they're the ones that are saying, all right, Polly, you're up. Uh, you know, it's it, this oh. is Polly B. She has a question for Freddie. And then you have like two minutes oh, okay. and then you chit chat. And then, all right, Kathy, you're on deck. All right, Kathy, you got your minute. What's your, you know, okay, so there's someone it. moderating the event. Because if you have, again, 100 people, it would be the wild, wild west of just a, so it has to be some sort of organization yeah. so that it can be okay. digestible. Well, because I know John <laughs> Edward does that with his, uh, his readings. So maybe I'll just ask Kat how they do it. Because he does readings for like 50 plus people in Zooms. Oh, okay. I'll ask yeah. them how they do that. Yeah. But mm. it'd be cool just to get some info together. We can kind of brainstorm and just see and maybe That'd start be... with something as si more simple like a Zoom. Yeah. And then maybe we can do an in-person thing in the future. And I'm a little biased towards Orlando because that's right up the street from me. Well, so. I would love to go to Florida. I've never been. I haven't been. The only... That'd be your first flight. Dude, I've only awesome. gone as far as Virginia. <laughs> like Virginia, that's it. I mean, obviously Maine, all that. And I've been over to, we drove through Ohio and went to Michigan. So that's it. I've not gone anywhere else. But you it's know probably um, like a, what? No, what? I was going to say, it's probably like a 20 hour drive to Florida. It'd be <sighs> worth it flying. Hour and 47 minutes, two hour flight probably for you nonstop. Okay. Do you know how hard that is for an ADD person to drive that long in a car? It's very difficult. It's hard for everybody, so I can imagine. <laughs> it's so hard. It's so it really. It's because I'm always like fixing my seat. My seatbelt's getting me, and then I gotta like my shoe is bothering me, and then I gotta like I want to turn something, and then I gotta. Turn. It's awful. It's like I'm a crazy person. I did. Uh, I did. Uh, we drove from Los Angeles to Orlando. It took 42 hours. Ugh. We stopped five times and slept, but total drive time 42 hours five days when we moved had the car packed we had our dog in the car with us and me and my wife just like just drove so it was interesting we went through eight different states and um but yeah it was it's it's you know when you set your mind to it it's kind of like all right but it's long i wouldn't recommend it flying's much easier i know and and there really isn't any reason that i haven't honestly except for i just didn't really have anywhere to go and i know my friends before like before i had my business and was actually making like grown up money like it was like i don't really have that kind of money to go do that but now i'm like okay now i have money that i could probably go but then where do i go and then you have to worry about like who's watching the dogs and then now i have chickens and then i got cat and then you got to make sure somebody's on vacation or when we can go or whatever. So, but now I feel like I could go. Yeah. But I do want to go to Florida. That's like one of the places I've always said I really, really want to go. So maybe this is the yeah, time. a good place to start. So maybe we can make something happen. But I, I think, think it's a good way to just at least like get the ball rolling. We can kind of just brainstorm and see if there's a good time to do something. But I think it's super awesome to to do collaborations because yeah. I, I think the community of, of everybody is going to love each other because if I feel like if we get along, it just seems like that's what you attract. You attract yeah. like-minded people and it could be right. a really fun trip for, for everybody. So and, um, do you yeah, know, let's look into that. Do you know uh, Heather Matarazzo? Yeah, you do. Mm -mm. Look her up. You got a computer right there? Look that up. I, I don't. Okay, write What's it down. Heather, Ma her Heather Maserato? Heather, and then her last name is, I'm trying to spell it, M-A-T-A-R-A-Z-Z-O. Look it up on IMDb, you'll know. Okay. So I did the same with her. I reached out to her here, and I was like, hey, you want to do a live? And she's like, yeah, well, now I love her so, so much, and we talk all the time, and she's... I don't even know, like we were talking the other day, I said, even if I had to shut this this app off forever, I'm just so grateful that I got to meet her. And we would have never met at all, ever. 
ever. Yeah. In this universe. And she, and she is the same. She's, you know, she's an actress and fantastic. And she would totally probably dig this if we did something too. She would come. Yeah. No, I think that's great. Yeah. We can, and I'll even see too, like reaching out to some of my friends as well and see if they want to do an event. Like we could, we could probably throw one hell of an event. <laughs> That'd be so fun. <laughs> I love it. Just like, just like random too. Like I love like just getting, like just having like a bunch of just different creators just different. and people and friends and, that's and invite just everybody. People. That's like the thing. It's like, we're all people at the end of the day, man. As long as you're cool and you're just nice and you're a nice human and you're just nice and not a dick. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. That's, that's what we should start calling the event circuit. Well, it's called the nice human tour. Exactly. And then we just say not a dick and we write yep. it on the, on the tickets. Exactly. The and I'll nice pick the human best tour. font. I'll pick all the fonts because I do all the design. <laughs> See, we got it. We got it going. We already have. We got, we already I, got, have. I got a little experience with planning events. Yep. You've got the the merch and the we designs the all down. We'll bring it. Look at this. We're all we're all done. we're on to something. We're already we selling created tickets. something live. Tickets are already being sold. <laughs> tickets are sold. It's a hidden website. No one knows, but it's being they're being sold. Oh my Christ! That's so fantastic. That's so fan. And bring your wife. I guess she could come, right? Yeah, she would love it. She's she would so love it. Cute. She's all. She's awesome. You, yeah, you would love her. She's, She's such so a sweetheart. Cute. I pretty much love everybody, anyways, unless you wrong me. Yeah. But then I still give people the benefit of the doubt. But you know, I I still have that big, too big of a heart sometimes. Yeah, but it's always great just to have the big heart. Because sometimes just let I just it, feel all the like, time, even if I know it's other people's loss. If they if they end up taking advantage or screwing you over, it's their loss. That's why I just I'm nice, hard on my sleeve. Yeah. If you fuck me over, I look at it as like I'm sorry because I feel like I'm a nice person and yeah. I never want anything from anyone. I'm just yeah. always just like just chill. Like, and I just like chilling. Why can't everybody just be that way? <laughs> it's less energy, right? Right. To be chill is just easier. It's just so, like, I can't even try to be like, because it's just, it just makes you feel yucky. Yeah. So how, how is it for your, um, how is it with your uh, community or even with virality that you've had and stuff? How's your experience with any sort of trolling? Is that, uh, do you seem to have like mostly positive I have a lot uh, of really engagement? awesome people. I can't, I mean, I've, I've had an incident with one person um that was kind of yucky to me and uh i the the best part about it is my friends that were here really really helped me through it because it was really awful it was really awful and but they they really got me through it and and this is when i didn't even i don't it was just weird like these people who don't even i didn't even really know help me with this person when I didn't even know. It's just so weird. Yeah. But yeah, so that, that's all gone. It was crazy. Yeah. They, I mean, they, like someone said, they were yucky to me too. So this person that was yucky to me were yucky to a lot of the people that are in here. So, but he's not yucky to us anymore. Well, but I, good. I mean, knock on wood, I, people have been very awesome to me. Dude, I say, I think it's what we put out. Cause I, I've seen a lot of like, like certain friends of mine, like I don't mean to laugh, but they, some of them get such bad hate that it's almost comical because you can't make this shit up. No. Like I'm talking the most, no. like crazy. there'll be times that I'm like, someone said that, you know, I was boring or something. And then they'll read me a comment they get where it's like someone wishing like the worst things on their family. I don't I'm even like, understand what the that. hell? Yeah. I'm like, what is some of this bad stuff? But, I think if you do more of like a lifestyle or comedy stuff, it, it's, it doesn't irk people. Yeah. Like I think if some people get into certain, like if you have a uh, topic that's off putting or controversial, you can create a lot of drama. But, mm -hmm. um, but I feel for the most part, I just kind of stay on the positive side of things and it's reciprocated that way. Most of the time, Well, today, which is nice. I had this morning, there was a, I, I don't know if you saw my apology video today. I, I had to do, I, there was, there's someone um, that does these really cool things with Photoshop. 
So when I was looking at it, I was like, oh, this is really cool. I really want him to do a picture of us, of me and um, Nate Simon and Tina Madlibs. I wonder if he could do this because I was looking through. I saw him do like Foul Mouth Female and Selena Spooky Boo. Well, I thought I was writing what I was going to write on the the uh, the video with Selena Spooky Boo. But I was doing it. I did it on the one he was doing on like a memorial. Okay. So I, all I said was, oh, my God, this is so great. Could you do this to blah, 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 blah? Uh, you know, that would be so cool if you did one of us. And, oh, my God, everyone's like, this is so rude. You shouldn't have done that. This is not the place to say at. And I was like, I didn't mean to put it on that one. I thought I was doing it on the other video. Yeah. Because all of his videos look the same. The, the first ones, they all look the same. Until you get yeah, into it. Yeah. So I made an apology video. And of course, everyone's like, I, you obviously, it was a mistake. And we all know it was a mistake. Yeah. But I just really was like, oh my God, I just feel so bad that I went on that. I didn't mean to at all, at all do that. And I, I'm glad people say, of course, it was a mix up. Of course, it was not. But I had to go and say it because I felt so friggin' bad. I didn't want to like... Oh, I hated it. I hate when you make that kind of dumb mistake. I was like, it was early in the morning, even had my glasses on. I'm sorry. I didn't do it. Yeah. But it's, I mean, people get it. Like, you know, the real people that know you and stuff too. It's like, I know. you, you know, you, if, especially if you're online, you got to think about even yourself. I mean, you probably put out, what, 10 hours of content a week? Yeah. We'll say if 10. you go live every, yeah. So yeah. That's, a, that's a lot of, I mean, that's a lot of talk. Like I do the same thing. My wife yeah. does the same thing. So it's yeah, like, it's a lot, you know, you, you can't always be perfect with what you're, you're speaking when you're putting it out into the universe 10 hours a week. So it's crazy. Some days, you know, I just, some days I want to get on and, you know, if you're having a bad day, the thing is I'm having, if I'm having like a not so funny day, some days I'm wait, I'm like, I'm not funny today. I'm not funny today. I can't find anything that's funny, you know? And I sit there and I'm like, but I know that somebody's waiting for something to be funny because that's going to make them happy. And I want to make them happy because if they're happy, then that's going to make me happy. So I dig down and I, and then when I do, and I'm like, I'm so glad I did that because now that friggin' just made me off. I made a friggin' video the other day and I, it made me laugh so hard. And I'm like, that's what it's all about, man. As long as it's making me laugh, I don't even care if I put it on there and you don't laugh or it doesn't get any likes. If it makes me laugh, I'm putting it on there. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. When you're like proud of your, yeah, when you're proud of your work, I'm like, I like this one. Like, I, this sometimes is... I walk by myself like, that's fucking gold. That's gold. <laughs> <laughs> it gets like three likes. I'm like, I don't care. That was fucking gold. Yeah, because we know what it takes to get, you know, put it in there. And, and it's also funny because I don't I don't repurpose my TikToks to Instagram reels. Like I'll make them separately and then post them. Yeah. But there's certain times that like TikTok, it'll run to like 100,000 and then reels it won't. But then other times right. on TikTok, it gets like 5,000 views. But on reels, it'll get 100,000. Yeah, so I'm like, care. it's the same video. Yeah. And it's funny how it like works like that. I can't but... grow my Instagram for the life of me. It's Instagram is is uh, you know it's hit its point where I mean we we've been pretty stagnant ourselves. You know, like you're it's like a grind because there's you know unless it's an Instagram reel at this point, it's really yeah. hard to gain exposure and also people are following a ton of people because they've had instagram for eight years right 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 so right. it feels like tiktok's like new and you're like oh you know let me follow let me do whatever so that's why i don't like to like think about the burnout thing because i feel like this is a moment in time i don't i don't know if tiktok will always have this great of reach so we might as well make content while we can get ride the most out. out of our yeah ride the and way then once it levels out then so be it. But we've found a lot of people who are like-minded and enjoy and, and you, you know, you build that, that fun mm -hmm. little audience and fan base. Yeah. And if you only find a handful of friends and that's, that's fine. Yeah. Oh yeah. I've made so many friends through, through online. So it's, I, I know you great. must have Look way more because you have not this, but you also have like your, in, you have a lot of Instagram followers. Yeah, I, I have a nice amount over there that I've built from, you know, 
2015. Right. Till yeah. Now, and I so wasn't it's been I, a while. Yeah. I just barely got on that for like this past, I don't know. I don't know. Eight, nine months ago. Not, not a lot. Yeah. Well, it's, it's for me though, it was really interesting because a lot of my Instagram was because of people who knew me from the show. So they were following my like character, even though of course they're following Freddie, but I feel they knew me and they followed me because they're like, Oh, that's sunny. Yeah. But with TikTok, I, I didn't like promote TikTok. So the, what I built on TikTok was based on people watching my videos being like, I like this guy, Freddie and following me for Freddie. Aww. So a big portion of my Instagram were people following me for my character and some for Freddie, but TikTok feels different because they're not, they're following Freddie, not a character. So it's felt really cool. And I can feel the difference and um, both have their perks. And I've been able to basically show people like, I know you found me from Sunny, but look at me, I'm Freddie. Here's my life. And some people have said, Hey, not only do I like you on days, but I like you as Freddie. That's so, so awesome. that's been cool too. You know, when, when people call you in the street and they call me by my character name, I look, when I hear Sonny, I like turn. And if I hear Freddie, of course I turn. But I, I'm like, when you play a character that long, you're right. that person. Of course. So it's, it's kind of neat to be known for a character that you played on TV. It's kind of bizarre. That is weird. That was, that is, that must be weird. That is really yeah. cool. I would love that, man. I would like to do that. That would be something fun. I would just love to be something and something. Someday. Yeah. I mean, and I or think not. we're opening up opportunities. Yeah. Well, we're opening up the opportunity because we're meeting a lot of people through TikTok and Instagram. And you get enough people together. You can write your own movie, shoot your own movie, put I it up know. on YouTube. Like, we don't need to sell it to a studio. I know. You can just make your own stuff these days. I know. Isn't that crazy? I'm just so excited. It's amazing. It, it is insane I, how... They're just... <sighs> and then I'm just like, why couldn't this have happened, you know, years ago? And I know, like, everyone's like, oh, you're only 50. But I feel like 50 is so much different from when my mom was 50. Like, I don't feel like I'm 50. I feel like I'm 20 in my brain. Like, 100%. So I feel weird... Yeah. Like, I feel like I'm not 50. Like, there's no way I'm 50. There's no way. My brain is not 50. My back feels 50. <laughs> <laughs> My brain, 100% is not 50. So Yeah. I feel like I'm like yeah. 37, maybe. I'm like hearing that, though, from a lot of people. And I feel that way. I'm 33. And I know that I'm young, but I don't feel any different than when I was 18. Yeah, I'm same. just a lot more wise. Like I have more perspective. Right. I'm not course. a selfish young little punk, you know, but like I feel the same. Yeah. Well, it's I funny because I talked to my friend's mom. She's like, I don't remember how much she was at the time. I think she was like 74 or something. And I said that to her. She goes, how do you think I feel? I'm 74 and I still feel like I'm 18 in my head. And I look in the mirror and I'm like, are you kidding me? Like that's scary, right? That's going to be scary. Yeah. But isn't it make you feel good, though, to think even when you're 74, yeah. you're still going to feel the same? So you've got like 24 years. That's so long before you're like, it's like so many lifetimes. It yeah, feels like. Let me tell you, though, when you don't have kids, time feels like it doesn't move, in my opinion. But the minute I had a kid, oh, it's like whew. now. I got one that's 20 and one that's 23. And I'm like, where'd you come from? Like, I don't even know where you people came from. Cause you didn't come from me. Cause I'm basically your age. So I don't know where you came from. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. It's weird. Well, you start seeing each year cause they're growing so fast. Cause I, I have know. nieces now and yep. we're watching. I'm like, yeah. I was holding you like this. Now you're like having a conversation with me. Yeah. Like what the hell's going on? So you can see the time going by, but. I know my, yeah. my nephew is a, a police officer and I'm like, don't talk to me like that. Cause I used to wipe your bum. Don't talk to me. Like, that. like I don't care That's if you're a crazy, policeman. right? Yeah. You used to walk around naked and just like, whatever. So like, don't talk to me. Like, I, get a little I know it's bizarre. I hate it. So yeah, weird. I don't know. I don't know why that is. I feel like, yeah, the, I don't know what's changing, but you're right. Like, I don't like 50 felt when we were 18, you're like 50. 
Yeah. But maybe 18 year olds think about that now. I bet you 18 year olds look at me and they're like 33. Yeah. Right. That's got to be ancient to an 18 year old. Yeah. But like, I know when I'm sitting around with friends, what we talk about as 50, what was, what was my parents talking about at 50? Literally, you like, you try to think, what were they talking about? <laughs> I don't know. Right? Like, were they talking about, like, the stove and how, like, efficient it is? Like, I don't know what they were talking about. Do you, do you and your friends, though, do you feel you're more immersed into maybe the culture? Like, do you feel like because social media, we're aware of what's going on in, like, the world? Like, imagine if we had no platforms yeah. to gain information on the world we would just be like roaming around and not like, I feel like I'm so much more aware oh, because yeah. of the things I watch online. So maybe my conversations change where back in the day, it was like, you probably like, yeah, you know, work, grew up in the, in the house and you worked down the street, you married your neighbor. Exactly. You had, exactly. It's all kind of, you know, so maybe yeah. just we're a little more mobile these days. And yeah. Cause get I more told information. my son, I don't know. I go, you're, I go, you're 20 and you know way more than I did at 20. He's like, that's not true. I go, you had you literally could go find the answer to anything right now when i had to go to the library and go like look under fucking microfiches for answers to shit but yeah. and then there wasn't answers to some things because nobody knew to write the answers down to, i mean you can go look at anything right now he knows way more than i did man hands down it's crazy yeah. I right or, or you'd have to call someone. And I feel like this is something that has I've been really thinking about lately. Like when system. our parents wanted to learn how to make an apple pie, they called grandma. Of course. And now we don't call grandma. We go to YouTube. And that's kind of weird. I was thinking, you know how sweet it would feel for grandma to be able to help her grandson? Like those are moments that I have to remember. Like, yeah, yeah you can look it up. But maybe you should call because that's going to mean something. Because we're just Aww. separating the generation so much because we don't, unless you want to ask for personal relationship advice or something like that, but we go to the internet for all our answers. We don't call mom and dad or grandparents or aunts to be like, hey, you're the only one who knows how yeah. to change this light bulb or whatever. Now you just YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. Yeah, because so, I remember whenever we, whenever we wanted, I mean, it was before the computer and, and my brother-in-law who's been in my life since I was, I think, 16 or 17. He married my sister. And anytime we had to remember a song or actor or anything like that, he would be the one. You got to call Joe. Boom. Call Joe. He would be like, oh, that's a uh, boom. He would know it. So he was like the one we always called for anything we needed to know. It was like, you got to call Joe. He knows. Call Joe. He knows it. Oh, that's a uh, boom, boom, boom. And he'd tell you everything. He was like the one to go to. But there's like... Nobody like that anymore. You literally, like, if you call someone, they're going to look on their phone and <laughs> give you the answer because nobody knows. Yeah. Things. Yeah. 20 years ago, if we didn't know who the actor in a film was, you just didn't know until you ran into somebody the next day that you could ask or go to the video store. But you, you would go to bed that night not knowing. Yeah. Nothing's <laughs> going to bother you anymore. You don't have to go to bed anymore wondering who something is or what something is anymore. No, just right look at your it fingertips. up or ask Siri. Yeah. You ask Alexa. Yeah, exactly. Ask Alexa over here. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's a wild time, but I, I'm, I, I, think it's, I think it's all just entertaining. I love it. And we're learning a lot, which is nice. Yeah, and then, and yeah, and I'm glad we're not in the friggin' Stone Age, honestly. I'm glad. I mean, I already had... We already had our thing where we had to put in so much information into our commute, uh, into our computers, just to make this little guy walk across the screen. Like that was like what our thing was like. We have to go to Radio Shack, and we're gonna get the Tandy SR twenty two, whatever the hell it is, and you have this whole in it. But if you mess one little letter up, you gotta start all again just to watch his little stick figure go. Beep, 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 and it was like woo. How long that take? 20 hours, but look at it. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> but what? The little green ball. Yeah. Boop, boop, boop. Gen yeah. X, man. It's a, yeah, it's a, I don't know. I think it's, I just think it's fun. Get I think off it's the, the internet. I need and... the phone. That's a good one. The what? Get off the internet. I need the phone because the friggin' modem, you know, I have to go through the phone. <laughs> Or yep. when someone called, you'd get booted off. Oh, people used to get so mad at that. Oh, my God. 
Yeah. Or having to, I remember begging my parents. I'm like, can we just get a second phone line, please? <gasps> They're like, it's $20 extra a month. Like, no. And I'm like, come on. I want to be on the internet. That's crazy. But here we are. There it is. But we're going to have <laughs> a meetup and we're going to do all kinds of fun stuff. If it's not this year, it's going to be the beginning of the next one. Yeah. Because it's already we're like down. October. Even, even if it's when we're 70, no matter when, we're going to make it happen. Well, if you're 70, that means I'll be dead probably already. <laughs> so that ain't fucking happening, dude. <laughs> no, we'll do it soon. No, and we'll let's and let's and let's connect on um, yeah. on Instagram because I feel sometimes I don't see the um, TikTok messages. Yeah, yeah, same. Or just know if I don't, maybe we can just look and connect on on Insta or TikTok or whatever. But I'm just you know just yeah, in yeah. case. Well, I'm gonna ask. Um, I'll ask Cat about the Zoom thing and see what what she has for advice because that'd be kind of fun to do. Like, even if we could just do like a fun Zoom thingy. Yeah. A Zoom hangout with, you know, whoever. And then see, I don't know. Yeah. And I don't know who you got I, in your brain for like, even if we did like a little quick thingy-majig down in Orlando. We'll talk about it. Yeah. We, I mean, yeah, we just have to just see who, you know, who who's available or who, you know. And we can just kind of brainstorm because maybe if we ask somebody, maybe they have some someone else. Like everyone could bring someone. And, and oh, create BYOF, bring your own friend. Yeah. <laughs> so what's it called? The nice human tour. Yes, the nice human tour, but don't be a dick. But don't be a dick, yeah. I love I it. I love it. Okay, so well, let's do it. I like it. We'll connect yeah. and uh and we'll go from there and then we'll um you know we'll see what okay what we can create. All right. Well, I love you. You're a lovely human. And I'm very You're a happy. lovely human. <laughs> I love that we are on here. You're adorable. And um, I can't believe you're 33. You're so little. That's like, it's like you're a little kid, man. But you've done yeah, so you much. Know. It's, cr it's crazy. I'm so grateful that you invited me on here and we got to have this talk. I, I feel like we connected. I, I feel like this isn't our first time meeting in life. No. It feels no. like we've known each other a long time. That, I get that a lot. And I'm so happy that I can actually, that I, I'm just so happy that you said that. Cause that's what I want. I don't like anybody feeling uncomfortable. I want everybody that I meet to feel welcome. I want people to feel like, I just want people to feel that. That's it. That's what I want yeah. in life. Well, this has been great. I'm so okay. grateful to know you, and I'm excited to to keep chit chatting. Okay. We'll figure out a nice time to do an event. Okay. So enjoy your night, and then okay. let's do this real soon again. Okay. Take care. Love you. Bye. All right. Take care, Polly. Bye. He's so sweet. I'm so excited. Yes, that was Sunny Kiriakis. So uh, I'm gonna head off to Betty Bye because I'm tired. Um, yeah, he's very cool. Very, very down-to-earth guy, man. I'm so excited. So I am going to uh, see about... We'll connect with him and see if we can do some kind of... Um, I definitely would love to do some sort of meetup with him in Florida. And I think Florida would be a great place to do it because it would because we can be outside. You know? I think it would be family. You are junior high. Well, fuck you, Jamie Tibbetts. <laughs> I know he's 33. I love him so much. Yeah, he's adorable. Jamie, we have to hook up because it's been way too long. I don't know what at all is going on with your life. Do you understand? I'm very upset. I've been by your house, I would say, four times in the last two weeks. And every time I'm going, I got to call him. I got to call him. I I'm very upset that I haven't talked to you. So please... Please, please. You got, what do you got? You got stuff like tomorrow? You have Fridays off? I don't know when you even have off anymore. I don't know what's going on. I miss you. I'm in Georgia. I need some bowling shirts. Oh, bowling shirts, eh? I thought you want to go bowling. That would have been fun, too. Um, holy crap, a lope. I know, I, I'm really tired. I think, I don't even think Greg's here. I think Greg went to, uh, hey, Polly, that was, I know, I think it was very, very awesome. He's a sweet man. 
He's a sweet, sweet man. I, I love people that are, you can just tell he's like just a genuinely great guy, man. I am I hope I get to, I, I really, I, I'm not even hoping, I know we're going to do some cool things together. I'm really, really excited to, to do things with him. Very excited. It's going to be fun. Um, okay, so I'm going to go to Betty Bye. Uh, I'm crazy about all of you. Thank you so much for coming in and supporting this. It was very fun. Um, I can't wait to do a meetup. I know. I want to do a meet and greet. I'm home all day, every day. Work from home. Oh, you work from home? <clears throat> Can you just come by tomorrow? Come and hang out. Oh, you can't because you work from home. All right. Hey, Jenna. Um, thank you so very much, everybody. So, so much. It was great. And uh, I will keep you up to date about what's going on. And I'll be on probably tomorrow in the morning time, sometime after 930, just to say hello in the morning. So good night and sleep tight and have a nice evening. Good night.